Okay, so this is the 2023 Higher Level Applied Maths paper, question 7. There are 12 waterfalls in a certain national park. Paths allow visitors to walk from one waterfall to another. In the network shown below, the edges represent the paths and the nodes represent the waterfalls, labelled with the letters A to L. The weight of each edge represents the time in minutes taken to walk between a pair of waterfalls. The park authorities wish to plan a route along the paths which allows visitors to see every waterfall while moving through the park without wasting time. The paths that are not on this route will be closed. Using an appropriate algorithm, find the minimum spanning tree for the network. Name the algorithm you used. Relevant supporting work must be shown. Okay, so I've started this already. Uh, I'm going to use initially anyway Kruskal's algorithm. I'll do Prim's algorithm as well, so you can look at that one or this one or both. But um, first of all, I'm going to do Kruskal's algorithm. The way you do Kruskal's algorithm is, first thing you do is you list all the paths and their weights in ascending order. So I've started here with FH, which is here, and it has a weight of 4. Then HJ, which has a weight of 6, and so on. All the way up to AC, which has a weight of 22. Now the next thing you do is you start drawing all of these edges. So let's do that. I'm going to start here with FH, which has a weight of 4. So F and H are here. There's F, there's H. So I'm going to draw this one first. So let's do that down here. So you got F here and H here, let's say. F and H has a weight of 4. So then you just tick that off. Next one is HJ. So HJ is out along this way. That has a weight of 6. So you draw that one next, so that's out here, HJ with a weight of 6. Next thing you do is you draw CD. So CD is from here to here, that has a weight of 7. So C and D, so we draw C let's say here, and D down here. C is here, and 7 is here. I and J is next, so we have J here and I, so we're moving down along here. That has a weight of 8. So I is down here somewhere, that is a weight of 8. Next one then, we're going to look at 9 for LK. So L is here and K is here, so we need to draw that one. So K and L and 9. So K is going to be here somewhere. L is, let's say, here, and that has a weight of 9. Okay, next one then is C and E. So C and E, C is here, E is here, so we're coming up along this way. And that has a weight of 9 as well. So C is here, and we're coming up along here to E. That has a weight of 9. Okay, what about K and I then? So K and I is here and here. So we're coming down along this way, and that has a weight of... 10, K and I, so we're just joining these two up, that has a weight of 10. Okay, next one is C and F, so C is here, F is here, and that has a weight of 10. So C and F, we can join those two, that has a weight of 10, so that's C and F, A and D is next, so A and D is here. So, and that has a weight of 11. So A and D. So we haven't drawn A yet, so A is here, D is here, and that has a weight of 11. Okay, next one, E and G. So E and G. E is here, G is here. So let's draw that one. E is here, G is out here somewhere, and that has a weight of 11. Okay, next one then, E and H. E and H. Well, E is here and H is down here. That has a weight of 11. Now, the problem here is that if we were to draw this line here, we'd end up drawing a cycle. So we don't include that. We can't include that, uh, that edge. So we're not going to use that one. G and J. So we have G here and J here. Again, that has a weight of 12, and again, you can see if we were to draw a line down here, we would end up with a cycle, so we don't include that one either. 
so G and J we don't include. F and I, I think might be the same. Let's see, F and I is along here. So if we were to draw that one again, we would end up with a cycle around here, so we don't include that one. So F and I we don't include. G and H, so let's see, we have G here and H. I think that may include a cycle as well. So, yep, so if we were to draw a line down here, we, again, we would end up with a cycle, so we don't include that one either. Now, we come up to here, we have a G and L for 15. So G and L is out along this way. And again, that will include a cycle. So if we were to draw a line out here, an edge out here, we would have this cycle here. So that's not going to be included either. Now, what about B and E? So let's see, we have B here and E out along this way. And that one we can do. Okay, so we have B here. Draw a line out here, and the weight there is 16. Okay, now I think after that we might just have edges that make cycles. So AB, that will include a cycle. DF, uh, DF will include a cycle as well. BC, B down to C here definitely will. JK, uh, over to here will include a cycle and AC will include a cycle as well. So none of these, none of these we can use. Okay, and that's it. There's our minimum spanning tree. So we've named the algorithm, Kruskal's algorithm, use an appropriate alg algorithm, find the minimum spanning tree for the network, we've done that. Name the algorithm we've done, relevant supporting work is done as well. Now, just as a matter of interest, you weren't asked to do this, but if you were to add up all those weights, so 11 plus 7 plus 9, 16, 11, 10, 6, and so on, you would get a minimum weight of 101. But again, as I say, we weren't asked to do that. Okay, let's just have a look at Prim's algorithm. So I've just copied down the, the question again so that I can see the... Uh, network. Let's have a look then at Prim's algorithm. So with Prim's algorithm what you need to do is start at any node. So let's say we start at B here, okay? So we're going to start with B and we're going to draw an, the edge with the least weight. So the edge with the least weight in this case is BE which is 16. You then draw the edge with the least weight from those two nodes. So we have, here we have, let's say, 17, 19, 9, 11, and 11. So 9 is going to be the lowest, so we're going to draw EC. So we're going to draw EC down to here. And that has a weight of 9. So from those three then, these three here, we have BC and E. The least weight, we have 17, 19, We've already done 9, 11, 11, we've 10, we've 7. So 7 and we've 22 here. So we've got 7 here. So from C to D is the lowest, and that is 7. So from C to D out here, that has a weight of 7. So let's look at all of those then. We have B, which is 17, C, 19. Uh, 9, 11, 11, 10, 18, 11. So 10 seems to be the lowest one. So that goes from C to F. So let's draw that one. C to F goes down along this way. And that has a weight of 10. So let's look at all those ones then. We have uh, 17... 11, 22, 18, out to there, 10, 4, 4 I would say is the smallest here, it is actually the smallest, so I'm going to do 4 from F up to H, so we come up here to H, and that has a weight of 4, okay, so let's see which, the, which is the lowest weight now, so it looks like it's going to be this one here, 6, I would imagine, there aren't any lower ones. Six, yes, and that goes from H to J. So we're going to come out along this way to J, and that one has a weight of six. 
After that then, uh, let's see, we have J, from J actually we have an 8 and we have a 7 here, but I think we've already got that one. So I think it's going to be J, I, which is 8. So from J to I is 8. And after that, let's see, we have an 8 here. Do we have a another 8? No, but we have a 9 here from E to C, which I think we already have. Do we have any other 9s? I'll just have a look up here. We have two 9s, L to K. So L to K, we have a 9, but we don't have K in there. So the next one would have to be 10 then. So we have a 10 here from I to K. So we can draw that one in anyway. So we have i to k here, which is 10. And let's see, what do we have now? We have a 9 coming up along here. So we can use that one anyway. And that would be the lowest, I think. So k to l is 9. And let's see, now we have, I think, some 11s here. So we have from E to G, which is an 11 anyway. And we have E to H, which is 11. And we have A to D, which is 11. I think we had three 11s up here. So A to D we can do. Yes, we might as well do that one. A is here, down to D, which is 11. Then we have, let's see, E to G, which is 11 as well. So we might as well do that one. E to G is 11. And that's it, I think. Do we have all of them at this stage? We have all the nodes in the minimum spanning tree at this stage, I think. Yeah, that's it. That's our minimum spanning tree. Yeah, we actually have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 nodes. So we should have 11 we should have 11 edges, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yep, so that's it. And it's actually exactly the same as what we got up here. If you were to add all of those up, you should get 101 as well. Okay, so that's it for this part of the question. Okay, so next question then, we have part 2. The park entrance is at waterfall A and the park exit is at waterfall L. Using your minimum spanning tree, calculate the time needed to enter the park at waterfall A, visit every waterfall and leave the park at waterfall L. Okay, so we're entering at A and leaving at L. So if we have a look at this. We can see here that we have our entrance here at A and we're leaving here at L. So that would mean that we would have to come down along this way, up along here, Go to E, out to B, back to E again, up to G, back here to E again, down to C, F, H, J, I, K, and L. So we got to just add up all of those weights. There's going to be 11, 11 plus 7 plus 9 plus 16 plus 16. Then plus 11, plus 11, plus 9, 10, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 9. So all I've got to do is add all of those up. So let's do that. So it is 11 plus 7 plus 9 plus 16 twice plus 11 twice plus 9 plus 10 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 9. When you add all of those up, you get 137, and they're minutes. So the question is, uh, using your minimum spanning tree, calculate the time needed to enter the park at waterfall A, visit every waterfall, and leave the park at waterfall L. So that's the answer, 137 minutes. Okay, so this is part B. A learning curve is a graphical representation of how a person's ability to perform a certain task increases with the time the person spends learning or practicing that task. A student wishes to be able to spell 2,000 difficult words. 
the rate of the student's learning may be modeled by the differential equation dn dt is equal to k times 2000 minus n, where n of t is the number of these words the student is able to spell after t hours of learning, and k is a pos positive uh, constant. At the start of their learning, the student is already able to spell 250 of these words. So in other words, n of 0 is equal to 250. Solve the differential equation to find an expression for n in terms of k and t. So let's start then with the differential equation that we're given. So it's dn dt is equal to k times 2000 minus n. So what I'm going to do, two things at the same time here, I'm just going to take this and bring it over here, and then I'm going to take this and bring it over to the left-hand side. So that will give me 1 over 2000 minus n, when I divide by this, on the left-hand side, dn is equal to k times dt, when I bring the dt over to this side. We've separated out our variables, so the next thing I want to do is just integrate both sides. So I'm going to integrate this side, I'm going to integrate this side here. I'm going to put in the limits as well. So at the beginning we know that the person can already spell 250 words. That's at time zero. So we, we want to increase that to n words over t time. So let's just do all of this then. So we've got to integrate 1 over 2000 minus n. So I'm just going to do this by inspection. We've got 1 over 2000 minus n. So 1 over something is going to be the log of that something. So it's 2000 minus n. Now, if you were to differentiate this, what you would get is 1 over 2000 minus n. And then what you would need to do is differentiate what's in the bracket. You would have to use the chain rule. So you would get minus 1 over 2000 minus n. So we have an extra minus here, here that we don't have here. So what we would need to do is put a minus here to counteract that. So if we differentiate this, then we would get minus 1 over 2000 minus n times minus 1. So that two minuses would give us the plus here. So that's fine. This is our differentiated function here. So we have 250 and we have n here. If we differentiate the right hand side, we've got k times t from 0 to t. We've got to put in n and 250 in on the left hand side. So we get minus the log of 2000 minus n when we substitute in n and then minus minus which is going to be plus the log of 2000 minus 250. And that's equal to substitute t in, you get kt, substitute 0 in, you get k times 0. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now is just take this here minus this and use the laws of logs. So I'll end up with the log, the log of 2000 minus 250, that's actually 1750, divided by 2000 minus n, using the laws of logs. On the right-hand side, I just end up with kt. Now, what I'm going to do next is just convert this from log form to index form. So this is log to the base e, so I'll end up here with e to the power of kt is equal to 1750, over 2000 minus n. So the idea now is just to get n on its own. So first thing I'm going to do is cross multiply. So this is over 1 if you like. So I'm going to multiply 2000 by e to the power of kt and the minus n by e to the power of kt and that's equal to 1750 times 1. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over the 2000 e to the power of kt. So I'll end up here with minus n e to the power of kt is equal to 1750 minus 2000 e to the power of kt. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by the minus e to the power of kt. So that will give me n here is equal to 1750 minus 2000 e to the power of kt 
divide by minus e to the power of kt. So that's really your answer, but I'm just going to tidy up the right hand side a little bit. I'm going to just take the minus e to the power of kt and divide it in to both the numerator terms. So that will finally then just give me n is equal to 2000 minus 1750 e to the power of minus kt. So all I did there really was I divided this in here first, so minus into minus gives me plus, and the e to the power of kt will cancel with the e to the power of kt, so I'm left with 2000. Here, if I divide minus into plus here, I'll get minus. And then all I did was brought this up using the laws of indices. 1 over e to the power of kt is e to the power of minus kt. So that's, the, that's kind of a neater way of writing the answer. Okay, so that's it really. Let's have a look at the next part of this question. So after six hours of learning, the student is able to spell 1,500 of these words, calculate k. Okay, so our formula that we derived earlier was, was n is equal to 2000 minus 1750 e to the power of minus kt. So we know that n of 6 is equal to 1500. We're given that in the question. So that means then that 1500 on the left hand side is going to be equal to 2000 minus 1750 e to the power of minus k times 6. So all we've got to do here is just isolate k. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring over this 2000. First of all I'm going to just subtract it and then I'm going to divide by 1750. So when you do those two steps you get 2 over 7 is equal to e to the power of minus minus 6k. Next thing I'm going to do is just find the log of both sides. So the log of 2 over 7 on the left hand side is equal to the log of e to the power of something is just the something itself. So it's just 6 minus 6k. Then divide the left hand side by minus 6. That's all just calculator work. And you will get your k here, which is 0 0.2087, 9382, 9382.81. Again, it doesn't say here to give it to any number of decimal places, so uh, that's, that's my answer, that's my k. Okay, so let's have a look at the next part of the question. Actually, I've done this one already, so it just says sketch a graph, uh, sketch uh, the shape of a graph of n against t to show the model's prediction for the student's learning curve. So what I did here was I just uh, put the formula here into my calculator, this one here into my calculator and put in 0 up to 30, stepped it up in 5s and this is the table that I got here and then plotted it. It's as simple as that. We're already given uh, 6 here by the way, n is equal to 6 as 1500 so that's why there isn't a 5 here. So that's this value here. So that's really it for this question.